I grew up in a country with a hot climate, and here I miss the warmth, the African warmth. That's what I miss. The village of Zakharina is 700 kilometers away from Moscow. It is a small community, which is somehow lost in Russia's vast territory. Long winters and short dry summers, just 40 houses and 200 residents, whose lives greatly depend on nature. May to October means hard physical farm work because good crop yields provide abundant food supplies during the winter. Their way of life has stayed the same for centuries. Francois would never have believed that one day he and his children would live in Russia, not to mention a rural village, and that he would have to learn a Russian farmer's way of life. It's uncommon for black people to settle in Russia. Some universities have an intake of students from Africa, but as soon as they graduate, they normally return to their native countries. Just a few choose to stay. In the Russian provinces, especially in villages, people have probably only ever seen an African on the television. Francois Tulikonkiko was born in the eastern African country of Rwanda. In St. Petersburg, I studied to be a doctor at the Mechnikov State Academy of Medicine. I graduated in 1996, and then I tried to enter a postgraduate program. Francois believed he would return to his native country to pursue a career in medicine. But during the early 1990s, Rwanda was plunged into civil war between the Hutus and the Tutsis. Around 800,000 people were killed. Most of Francois's family were among the dead. Francois had nothing to return to. By that time, I'd already had a family of my own. And I found myself amongst Rwandans who chose to stay in Russia. I miss those who died. First of all, my father, because he was one of those who was killed and whose burial place is unknown, if they were buried at all. Francois met his future wife, Christine, at university. She lived just a few blocks away from Francois in Rwanda. It's ironic that they were virtually neighbors, but actually met for the first time many years later in St. Petersburg. I love children very much, and I dreamt of becoming a children's doctor. I'm a fast learner, and it's very important in medicine because you have to learn so much off by heart. I graduated from medical school with honors. Like Francois, Christine lost everything and everyone in Rwanda, her house, her family. What remains are just memories of a carefree childhood and photographs of her close relatives who are most probably dead. We are trying to trace them in Rwanda, but there is still no news. We don't know their address or anything else about them. My older sister, her husband and children were killed during the war. It was hard for Francois and Christine to accept that they will never be able to go back home. They had to start over again in a foreign country. They were no longer guests in Russia, and became outcasts, having no status and citizenship. When I arrived here, my only goal was to study, to graduate from university, and to go back home. 
What I have now is beyond a bad dream. But it just happened this way, and we had to adjust to various circumstances. On graduating from university, Francois and Christine already had two children, a son, Lionel, and a daughter, Frantina. The family lived in a dormitory, but when the children started to grow, the family needed more money. It was difficult to make ends meet. They had two more daughters, Valentina and Victoria. Francois couldn't find a job as a doctor. Without citizenship, he couldn't really find any kind of work. I needed to be close to my countrymen and to live where I knew someone. So in 1998, I bought half a house in the town of Novosokolniki, where other people from Rwanda had settled. That's how we found ourselves in this amazing country, the place where the great Russian poet Pushkin, who's of African descent, used to live. I joke that Pushkin's footsteps brought us to this place. Francois and Christine decided to move to the Russian provinces, hoping to feed their large family off the land. That's how they came to be in Novosokorniki. Their youngest son, Leonardo, was born in Novosokorniki. But when they finally managed to settle here, their house burned down, destroying all of their possessions. The family had to start over again. Francois approached charities for help. They helped him to find the money to buy a deserted house in the village of Zaharima, a few kilometers away from Novosokorniki. <laughs> This is where the Tulikonkikos now live. In Zaharina, the newcomers were given something of a different welcome and were met with suspicion. At first they couldn't understand why they needed so many children. It was difficult for the Tulikonkikos to explain to them that in Rwanda, even the poorest family with many children is considered to be a happy one. When Rwanda women meet, they always greet each other by saying girava, which means have many children. I love children very much. It makes me happy to see how they always smile. This is the best blessing from God. Francois's father once told his son, anything can happen in your lifetime. You could suddenly fall ill or lose all of your money. That's why the only thing you can rely on is your friends. And Francois has many friends in the village. Natalia Zakharova often lets him use her horses, helps with hay for the goats, and teaches him about Russian farming. Natalia and Francois set up a horse riding club in the village and teach children how to ride and work in the stables. Francois and Christine have five children. All of them speak Russian fluently and learn the basics of village life. I fetch firewood. In the evenings, I help around the house. First, I water the garden, then come home, wash my hands, have supper, brush my teeth, and go to bed. Francois and Christine raised their children as Rwandans. They combine Catholic values with Russian culture because Russia is now their home.
The oldest children, Lionel, Frantina, and Valentina, go to school in Nova Zakorniki. If the school bus fails to turn up, they face an hour-long walk. For ordinary schools in central Russia, seeing these children is quite unusual. That's why we treated each child differently at first. But the more time they spent and studied with us, we got used to each other. When the children first arrived at school number one in Novosokorniki, it shocked the villagers. Everyone, even pupils from neighboring schools, started going there, just to see who they were. Francois's children are used to this. He tells them they are lucky, because they're always the center of attention, while many other people have to strive for it. The traditional hairstyle, these African braids, amazed the whole school at first. Everyone would come to have a look, because you can't braid our hair like that, and their traditional hairdos looked so stylish. It was quite hard to make friends with them at first, but that lasted just for the first few days, maybe because they were newcomers to the class or because they felt lonely. But children will be children. Within a day or two, they were running along the corridor, copying each other's work. They started doing everything together. These children distinctly differ from the others because they study hard. They're disciplined, well-bred and reserved about showing their feelings. I never see these youngsters yelling in the corridor or running around for no reason. Valentina Tulikonkiko is in her first year. She could already read and write before she started school. Her older sister, Frantina, taught her. Valentina likes drawing most of all, and her pictures show a lot about how she sees the world. Valentina draws a house, her family, and certainly her friends. Her friends can always be seen in the pictures. She constantly draws animals. She likes them as well. See, it's because of her family. They have a small farm, and that's why she draws animals. And all of her pictures are cheerful, bright and beautiful. Here we have kid goats. This one is called Janna. This one is Dasha. Here is Vika. And this one is Katya. The Tulikonkikos own many goats which provide milk for the children daily. They need to be milked twice a day in the winter and three times a day in the summer. Christina's daughter, Frantina, also knows how to milk the goats and has some valuable tips. A goat is always milked from the side. You have to know its temperament. For instance, in order to milk my goats, I need to bring hay to soften them up. If I say something bad, she will kick me and run away. I sing songs for them, and they like it. Frantina is in her fifth year at school. The teachers note that she is doing well in Russian language and literature. But she says she likes singing the most. Frantina's elder brother, Lionel, is keen on football. He's a passionate Manchester United and St. Petersburg Zenit fan. 
We've taken part in one tournament and we played three matches. And Lionel scored one goal. Lionel is in his seventh year. He is also doing well at school, and his teachers always remark on his excellent academic performance. I came here from the city of Yerevan to study. Lionel was my classmate. At the beginning, it was very hard for me to adjust because I'm a different nationality. I realized that Lionel is a very kind boy. He helped me get used to this place. He asked me how to say, I love you, in Armenian. Children of various nationalities study at the school. Armenians, Georgians, Ukrainians, Belarusians. The children have lessons to understand other people's culture better. We are dealing with ethnic relations, no matter whether it becomes more or less acute in society. We have many peoples from different ethnic backgrounds, so we have to cope with it. We are different, but we live together. October 2004. A Vietnamese student is brutally murdered in Liev Tolstoy Street. November 2005. A young supporter of anti-fascism, Timur Kocharava, is killed in St. Petersburg. Francois is well aware that once a problem appears in one part of the country, it could soon spread to and affect Nova Sikorniki. That's why he decided to step in and deal with it like a doctor would, taking preventive measures by advocating racial equality to young people. He holds training sessions and seminars in schools in Nova Sikorniki. He's been invited to the town of Veliki Luki and St. Petersburg to give seminars. Russia is a multinational country. Now, this picture shows a person holding portraits of various people, Russian citizens, who were killed by neo-Nazis and skinheads, not only in St. Petersburg, but also in other parts of Russia. Tolerance of intolerance is a crime in itself. As I've said already, it concerns all of us. Francois applied to the Russian Migration Service in 1994, but had to wait until 2005 to receive refugee status. Christine is still waiting, which makes it almost impossible for her to find a job, receive social benefits, or free health care. The family relies on what they grow to survive. There are several other Rwandan families in Nova Sikorniki. Epifania lost her husband during the Civil War. She fled to Russia with two children in the hope that she would soon move to Europe. But she had to stay for many years. Francois's friend, Everest, a French language teacher, travels from the town of Veliki Luki to visit him. Rwandans like to get together on big occasions and reminisce about happier times for several hours. They cook traditional meals, speak their native language, share memories, and laugh a lot. Pain stays in the heart. The face doesn't show it. This is a traditional Rwanda saying. For these people, life in Russia has had its ups and downs. If they had the choice, they would return to their native country, Rwanda. But what about their children? 
They were born in Russia. They go to Russian schools and speak the language. I'm a religious man. I think everything that happens is God's will. Time will pass and I'll realize what the mighty has led me into. The only thing Christine and Francois want for the children is a safe and comfortable life so that no one will ever ask them where they come from because the answer is quite simple, Russia. I would like my children to study well, go to university and receive a good education. I would like them to be happy, to lead normal lives, be healthy and never fall ill. This is what I want. Victoria, what's your dream? I wish my mother was feeling well and her feet didn't ache. I fell ill terribly, but now I feel fine. Hey, what do you want? Sleep. Sleep. <laughs>